Welcome to Worship with Clinton Presbyterian Church. Thank you everyone for joining us either in person or online this morning. We are glad you have joined us for worship. As we listen to the prelude, please take a deep breath, settle into your space, and look around at the beautiful faces of those who are gathered here this morning. Let us pray. O oh God, when our ancestors wandered in the desert, you fed them with bread from heaven. When we found ourselves in the presence of our enemies, you prepare a banquet before us, inviting us to feast. We begin to feel that hope has been lost. You remind us of our promise of a rich banquet in your peaceable kingdom. We gather this morning once again hungry, once again unsure of where our next meal will come from, once again feeling surrounded by ill will, once again facing hopelessness, and you invite us to come eat breakfast with you. Thank you for the way you gather us together at your table as your church. Amen. Please join me in, make, in taking a moment to greet one another with peace. Don't forget to come up to the camera and greet the folks on Zoom. The peace of Christ be with, be with you all. And also with you. Am I out?
It looks like we have quite a traffic jam today. So I'm going to start the hymn. And hopefully by the time you guys get back to your seats, you can sing the second verse with me. Um, no, Melly, this is the uh, all who get the all who hunger. This is a different one. Yeah. Oh, you guys are good. Yeah. Right? I'm cutting it. It's an insert. Uh, we're going to sing verse two. Yes. Okay. Get ready. Get excited. Almost. They got back to their seats pretty quick. We forget second verse. Come from the restlessness and roaming here in joy. Keep the feast. We were lost and scattered in communions. Love has stood. Taste and see the grace. Eternal taste and see. Your time. Okay. Okay. The intro, the intro has three parts. One part is for me. One will be for everyone who is in this second cherry in person this morning in, in Tadlax. And one will be for those joining us remotely in bold. Those joining us Zoom, please unmute your mic so we can we can hear you. Is the table ready? Yes, we are preparing our hearts to feast with Jesus. Do we have the right numbers of chairs? We will pull out we'll all pull the, out extra, the ones, extra ones, making room, making for, room all. for all. Will we have enough? God can multiply what seems small into an abundance. Jesus invites us to experience his hospitality. We are, we are grateful for his, for his loving, loving invitation. invitation. Let us worship together this morning. Amen. Amen. Jesus calls us from our regular lives to follow him. But sometimes we feel like we aren't worthy, like the people who criticize Jesus for eating with tax collectors and sinners. We feel a little judgy about others as well. We're not always eager to attend the banquet God invites us to, but God desires mercy with us, for us, and within us. Let us pray. God, God, you, you say, say you desire mercy, and yet we struggle to forgive others, to forgive ourselves. We are quick to judge and slow to welcome, despite your generous invitation for us. We worry that there will not be enough, rather than living into your promises of abundance. Forgive us and make us new, we pray. When a friend interrupted dinner to wash Jesus' feet with expensive oil, he told her, your faith has saved us. Friends, you have been saved by the grace through faith. You are forgiven. Be at peace. 
Thanks be to God. Just gonna During make sure. our hymn, which is number 695, not what it says in your bulletin, uh, just what it says on the wall. <laughs> Um, children and Sunday school teachers are invited to go to Sunday school while we sing. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, there's about, I don't know, how many hymns that all start with the same words, and we're going to sing 695. That's the one we're going to sing. And Melanie's going to join me, sir. Yeah, okay. You want to go through it all the way? Let's, okay. That's usually a very like, I don't know, straight song that's like do, do, like March almost. That was yeah, we did good there. We did good. <laughs> for, for today's scripture will be Psalm 23, 5 to 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You ready to sing this? <clears throat> I'm still working on the last one that we did. So this is in your bulletin. Little, uh, you satisfy my hunger, the hungry heart. You satisfy the hungry heart with gifts of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. People were singing it this time we're learning that yes good job <laughs> remember we're professionals 
<laughs> we're professionals. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter nine, verses nine through 13. It says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. Friends, this is the word of God. Um, good morning, everybody. Sorry, I didn't see you guys come in. Hi, God. Um, uh, just saying hello. <laughs> How's everybody? Um, a lot better than last week, let me tell you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So in thinking about um, popular cultural stories about sharing meals, as we continue our fall series about gathering at tables, there's one really great story that I've been thinking about. It gets passed around on the internet like every Thanksgiving since about 2016. Um, Will's going to queue up a video for us. I, I bet you've heard it already, but in case you haven't, um, this is the story of Wanda Dench and Jamal Hinton. Will's going to share the sound. It's going to be great. It's going to work perfectly. It's so nice to see you guys. Did you ever think you would still be talking about this seven years on? No, not at all. Right up front, Jamal. When I first met Wanda Dench and Jamal Hinton in 2016, they were strangers brought together by a mistaken text. The grandma writing, Thanksgiving dinner at my house at three. Jamal answering, you're not my grandma. Can I still get a plate though? The rest is viral legend. Oh, I'm like her. Then. But what started as a mix up and ensuing media frenzy has become a tale of something much greater. He's literally changed my life and my point of view uh, on young generations uh, about being open to friendships when you think you have nothing in common with somebody, but when you just sit and talk to them, oh my gosh. They talk throughout the year, meet for dinners. When Jamal started a business, he put Wanda on the billboard. I've always told her whatever I'm doing, she's a part of no matter what it is. They celebrate all sorts of milestones. I accompanied Wanda for her first tattoo uh, about a month and a half. A tattoo? Oh yeah, that's right. And that's like BFF level when you're getting getting tattoos, right? <laughs> Matching tattoos next. <laughs> they clearly have fun, but there have also been hard times. When Wanda's husband Lonnie died of COVID, Jamal and his girlfriend Michaela were there for her. I heard some rustling at my front door and I opened it up and Jamal and Michaela were dropping off a whole bunch of food and, and gifts and stuff. Hey guys, hey. how are you? How are you doing? The kind of friendship Americans can't get enough of. And what is this I hear about a movie? Yes. Oh, we're not allowed to talk about it. Their next adventure, a Netflix film in development. Of course, as life goes on, there are changes. Wanda is retiring and moving a few hours away. So you'll be driving next Thanksgiving? Yes, it's gonna be Do a class. <laughs> already have plans for next year. <laughs> Other things haven't changed. He is big on texting me, but uh, I'm always like, just call me. We're going to work on your text. Don't worry. We're going to work on your text. <laughs> but sometimes texting mistakes lead to exactly what you need. I honestly don't know where, like, I would be sometimes. So it, it's it's amazing to have her as a friend and as, as my family. <laughs> a friendship for the ages, something they're thankful for every day of the year. We always talk about that. And I told her like, hey, like the cameras at a fame, everything could stop tomorrow and nothing's changing between us. So. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's in my heart for, for life. Uh, this friendship is so uh, genuine. They're such sweet people. I have to tell you guys, when I was sick, I we can stop it there unless you want to hear the chit chattering. Yeah.
I know. Isn't that so, so okay? Bobby's fully crying. Uh-huh. What a story, right? It's no wonder that it goes viral every year. It's so beautiful. This white grandmother forming a bond with a stranger who happens to be a black teenager. It's so unlikely in our country where race and class and age conspire to divide us from and against each other at every turn. It's really not that revolutionary what they've done, joining for a meal, but at the same time, the story is so special because it is so rare. It doesn't happen every day. And you kind of start to wonder why not. I think one of the most interesting details of this story to me is that it began with a mistake. Wanda didn't mean to reach out to a stranger. Jamal had no intention of looking for an unlikely friend. What captures us about their story where we might find another miracle at table is the way that both of them reacted to the original wrong number mix up. Wanda certainly could have texted back, oops, sorry, wrong number, never mind, right? And Jamal, for his part, I think we would all have understood if he had just deleted that text. There's um, in the scripture reading this morning, this slur that we heard that got thrown around a lot at Jesus during his ministry at least according to the gospel writers who recorded it. Um, he eats with tax collectors and sinners. It was a statement meant to scandalize, to undermine Jesus' religious authority, to draw attention to the questionable company that he kept as a way of discrediting his message. In the Greco and Roman world where Jesus and the disciples lived, meals held an enormous cultural value. Eating with somebody was not just a random event, but much more like the middle school lunchrooms of our nightmares. Eating together with people was uh, understood as a way of, of bonding yourselves together, of declaring who you were, who you belonged to. It mattered who you sat down with. In some cases, the groups of people who gathered for meals were trade guild members, folks who worked in a similar field who could help you to make connections or offer you employment. Some groups who gathered for meals were known as burial clubs, communities of not very well-off folks who agreed they would pool their resources to pay for one another's funerals when the time came. The earliest Christian churches were groups of people who met for meals in the Greco-Roman style, using the standard elements of every meal, sharing bread and wine, telling stories, making prayers, to demonstrate their devotion to the way of Jesus. Jesus very well understood the cultural significance of the Greco-Roman meal, and it mattered to him who he ate with, although maybe not in quite the same way. As usual, I'm sure there was at least one or two disciples who were like, could you just be more strategic? Could you have one meal with the important people? Could you just get into that right network one time? But Jesus truly never cared about strategy, or at least his strategy was not our strategy, right? He had a different agenda altogether, and he said as much to the people who criticized him. He said, I'm looking for mercy, not sacrifice, not religious piety. I'm here for the people who are looking for something different, for the ones who want healing, not for the ones who think that everything is fine. Often when we hear about Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners, we take it as almost an indictment of our own inability to be more welcoming of others. We put ourselves in the position of generous Wanda who extended her hospitable hand, the Thanksgiving dinner for someone in need. And when we do this, we deprive ourselves of the opportunity to experience receiving an invitation, discounting the courage that it can take to accept one. In an interview that the unlikely Thanksgiving pair did in 2021, Wanda brushed off her own gesture of hospitality saying, my dad's Navy. So we would invite vets over that we didn't know either for Thanksgiving every year. But then she went on and she put her finger on the part of the story that makes it so compelling to us, I think. She says, I saw Jamal's picture. And even though I invited him, I didn't think for a second he'd want to come to my house after seeing my picture. Matthew, the scripture reading today tells us was a tax collector. It was a hated profession for any Jewish person. Jewish tax collectors worked for the benefit of the Roman Empire, which charged the local people with heavy, heavy taxes. Tax collectors were not only agents of this brutal occupying regime, but the way they made their own living was by adding a little bit to the top. That's how they got paid. And it made folks very suspicious of them. 
Not only were they working to prop up the occupying force of Rome, they were personally benefiting from their own people's suffering. It was a controversial role, a hot button issue in Jewish culture at the time. And people had a variety of opinions on how appropriate it might be to reach out to a tax collector. You could, in today's terms, maybe substitute a trans child, a QAnon believer, a woman who needs an abortion, a big steel advocate, okay? This was like scary stuff. At this part in the book of Matthew, Jesus had called some people to be disciples. They were mainly fishermen who worked in one of the hardest, dirtiest jobs of the ancient world. And we can understand why they would be desperate to leave this hard work in the countryside. But Matthew, I don't know if it was a certain thing that he, that he would want to follow Jesus. I mean, what would the other disciples think about him? He'd felt the sting of rejection from religious insiders before. He had to know that judgment was coming, that he would easily become the center of controversy. Why would he ever accept this invitation to dinner? When we read Jesus' words that he desires mercy and not sacrifice, I think we automatically put ourselves in this place of offering mercy. Isn't it wonderful that this church does such a good job of welcoming LGBTQIA folks? Oh, isn't it just such a beautiful thing that these white people did in the early 2000s, welcoming new Cameroonian brothers and sisters, when really we should be appreciating the mercy of LGBTQ folks who are still willing to risk being part of a religion that continues to be weaponized against them in polite society. We should be honoring the fortitude of those first Cameroonian members, right? Of Francis who visited and came back, who had the mercy to keep coming back to invest in making this place something more than what it was. Admiring the mercy of Jamal who risked showing up at an unknown white family's Thanksgiving. Wow. When we think about it that way, suddenly, we're not just proud of our own sacrifices to welcome others, but we become more aware of the ways in which we've all been part of systems that divide and oppress. Maybe we're beginning to see that the ability to show mercy is an important skill that people who belong to marginalized groups often need to practice. And something about it, maybe, maybe that wakes us up a bit to what it means to show and to receive mercy. It's no secret that our country our world, our communities, and our families are more divided than perhaps ever before. We have all learned to make judgments about who it's okay to welcome and who must be sacrificed on the altar of our own righteousness. But just as Jesus called Matthew a tax collector, just as Jesus called that unlikely, unliked person to follow him, he also calls us each of us, all of us, like Wanda and Jamal, this was no mistake, but we have an opportunity to respond to an invitation each and every moment. So friends, may we be the ones who show mercy. May we be the ones who show up when maybe we're not wanted. <laughs> may, we, may we be the ones who welcome what we don't understand each of us controversial guests of a generous host. May it be so. Um, let's continue to pray together. Creative covenant making God, we come to you in faith, seeking your way in the world and your will for our lives. Hear our prayers for the wisdom to know what is right, for the courage to speak the truth, for the strength to resist temptation, for your mercy when we fail, for people who are persecuted, for loved ones who have suffered loss. Continue to speak your word to us. Let it shape our lives for your service that we may follow you faithfully and be the people you have called us to be through Jesus Christ the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Malemi is going to lead us in the call to the offering, but before she does, you guys, go back in your mind to a time before COVID-19, a time when we thought surely the world would come together to unite against a common threat, right? A time when we had faith in the basic goodness of humanity. Okay. Um, a time when we used to pass an offering plate. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> um, we're going to try it again. So I believe it's our greeters who we're greeting today are going to go to the back and get the two offering plates back there. And they're going to pass them while Jen plays the music. I'm just telling you because it's been a while, right? And they're going to stand at the back until they hear the doxology begin. And then they will start walking forward and we will all stand and sing. Remember, do you remember doing that? Some of you. Yeah, some of you are like, I've, there's there's a fair, fair amount of new people since that time. So uh Yes, so Malami is going to start us off with the call to worship, and then we'll invite the ushers, whoever was greeting at the door today, to go get the plates. Okay. When the disciples were afraid they would not be able to feed the crowd with only a few fish and some bread, Jesus multiplied the people's gifts into dominance. When we fear we do not have enough, Jesus continues to work miracles transforming each faithful gift into an abundant community. As we pass plates to collect the offering here in the second chain, you are also invited to visit our website, org and give online if that is easier for you. Thank you to everyone who has given to support this church this week. We are grateful. Yeah, so when you're done collecting, you're going to go stand in the back, and then Jen's going to see that you're done, and she's going to start the yeah, doxology. Otherwise, I'm going to here. <laughs> We're just going to practice it while it's happening. This is our chance. Oh, so good. What a good job they did, right? That was beautiful. Just poetic. Lovely. Oh, what's that? They're in the back. Look at that. What's that? Oh, a familiar chord, perhaps. <gasps> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures I am. Hallelujah. 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 H
Perfect. Wonderful. Love it. Just stand right there. And then we're going to have a prayer and then you can go. Okay. Let us pray. Creator of all that is, <laughs> for all that you have given us, thank you. For all that you have promised us, thank you. For calling us to share in your goodness and your work in the world, thank you. Receive these gifts we bring, our treasure, our hands, our hearts, and bless them for the good of your realm. Amen. Amen. And then we all sit down. We did it. <laughs> what do you think? Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to add on the special offering for birthdays. Uh, remember birthday Sunday offering? And it goes to Sunday school or deacons, and I will never know which one, but I'll try to remember by then. Um, good job. We have some announcements, I think. What are they? Anybody? Um, volunteers, as always, needed. Um, if you want to be worship leader like Melemia is doing, even if you are remote, you can do it. It's awesome. Um, Will is our Zoom host today, um, putting those slides up for us. Coffee people we always need, although Kevin, I think, is setting up coffee right now. Awesome. Um, et cetera. Greeters. Greeters now have a fun new responsibility. You get to pass the offering plates. So maybe that appeals to you and you want to volunteer. Yeah, do it. Um, OK, what else is happening? Bible study, Tuesday nights on Zoom. Link on the website. Um, Dave is the fearless leader once again of that intrepid crew. Um, in a couple weeks, oh, what? Oh. Can we get a reminder text for Bible study? Yes. Hold on. Yeah, I was waiting. I'm going to write it down. Uh-huh. Great idea, because sometimes you're like, oh, it's 745 on Tuesday. Sure. And we can't respond to that, right? No. You can respond to that, but, but it's no not gonna going it. to yeah. somewhere where anyone sees it immediately. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If, it's a, if it's a whole church text. Yeah. Um, in two weeks, um, we're doing a cleanup day after church again, in the world of things that we like did in 2019 and haven't thought about since we used to twice a year, have a big cleanup day, or we would like dust and vacuum and put the storm windows down and all that kind of stuff. So that will be in two weeks. Feel free to wear your cleaning clothes to church. We'll have a list of different jobs and you can pick one. Um, and we'll just stick around afterwards. We'll have some snacks and hopefully many hands make light work. There are some shoe boxes. How, four? Shar understood the assignment. Uh, remember, I said we don't want some like size five women's shoes box. We want like the boots shoe box. This is awesome. So we're still looking for two more shoe boxes if anyone's got one, but these are going to be um, cover your ears, Malemia. These are going to be gifts, care packages for our college students. So now that the boxes are here, if there are things you'd like to include in these packages, please, um, by all means, bring it in. Ramen or microwave mac and cheese or a little Dunks gift card or whatever you think that they might enjoy just to remind them that we love them and are thinking about them. Those will be in the back, I guess. Um, remember last week we had um, Liz from Wheat here talking about the Thanksgiving boxes. So she was talking afterwards with what is now the, the mission committee, I think, Scott and Lisa. Um, well, I'm just looking at you, Mike, sorry. Yes, yes, the woman who's there usually. Um, and they're gonna head that up. Scott uh, told Liz, we're good for six Thanksgiving dinners. So, okay, um, we're gonna get a list from her about exactly what to include, but every box is gonna have like stuffing mix and potatoes and carrots and whatever. Um, so more info will be coming on that. And we'll be asking people when they come to our um, Thanksgiving service on the first Sunday in November to also participate, which is another like, we've done that a little bit since COVID, but we haven't had a big um, celebratory Cameroonian Thanksgiving service really since like 2019, right? Last year was pretty good. Um, but that's a day that is not about American Thanksgiving. It's about giving thanks to God for um, everything in our lives we have to be grateful for. And the tradition is to invite your uh, friends and family and neighbors and coworkers and acquaintances and mailman and whoever else um, to join us for that day. So we'll have some invitations. Jen's working on both like a digital one that you can send and a paper one if you wanna invite somebody. And soon the choir will be working on some music. And the choir will be working yeah, on some music. I, I was going to send it out in a, maybe a week or so. 
Okay, so if you like haven't been really singing with the choir and you would like to sing, yeah. just let Jen know and she'll put you on the list. It is um very low pressure. Yeah, I'll send you the music to see. I'll send you a sound bite so you can listen to it. And then we usually just kind of put it together gradually. Yeah, it's in unison this time. Oh, it's cool. the one your friend wrote. Oh, my friend wrote it. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, <laughs> more later. Um, Bobby has a card for you to sign at the back of the church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Children's Sunday, October 29th, right? The last Sunday. Yes. And the kids are like really working. I have no idea what's happening, but if you have a kid, those of you who are online, if you are young people, um, we need you here that day. Cool. That was a million announcements. All right. Um, so if you'll walk back in time with me to a time when we were like, we'll start gathering in person, but it's really, we have to be really cautious about the spread of COVID particles. So we're going to put all of our singing at the very end of the service. Do you remember that choice? Like, oh yeah, we'll sing a hymn and we'll have a prayer and we'll sing the doxology and then we'll leave the room. Like that was the thinking at the time. And it was, I think a good idea. Um, and now that we've taken the doxology back to its place after the offering, it's back to what we used to do at the end, which was a Cameroonian praise song. Um, so we're going to have closing prayer from Malemia. Uh, God love, the drum is coming to you, so get excited. <laughs> um, Malemia, whenever you're ready, give us the closing prayer. Please join me as you have in other parts of the service in one of the three parts of this prayer. One part is for me, the worship leader. One will be for anyone who is in the second train in person this morning in a Tylox, and one will be for those joining us remotely in bold. Those re joining us on Zoom, please unmute your mics so we can hear you. Let us go now in peace. Seeking to meet Jesus at our kitchen tables. Let us go now in joy. Let us go now in grace. Extending invitations without expecting to be paid back. Let us go now in love. Trusting, Trusting in God's permission. Let us go find God's holy banquet in the world. Amen. 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 All right, who's singing? Oh, Caroline? Lord, Caroline Lord, looks Lord, like Caroline. she's got something. Standing on the rock, standing on the rock, standing on the rock, Jesus is the rock. Are you standing? Standing on the rock. Are you standing? Standing on the rock, standing on the rock, Jesus is the rock.
which is just um, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Thank you, Caroline, for that beautiful message. Um, as you go from this place, let us maybe be aware more of what it means to receive mercy uh, and to extend mercy. Let us go in peace to love and serve God. Amen? Amen. Amen.